This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, wa fi ni'amahu wa yukafi'u mazidahu, sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم By the grace of Allah تبارك وتعالى we come together in the second day or the last day of this series of lectures entitled The Purification of the Soul And we mentioned that usually when the ulama speak of the purification or Tazkiyatul Nafs they speak of two subjects at large the soul and the heart and this short series of lectures four lectures in total they're focusing on the heart particularly so yesterday we were discussing the different types of hearts do we have a volunteer to sum up for us the different types of hearts? Okay, we picked the sister there. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Well, we had one brother giving us these hearts and one sister, alhamdulillah. So you have the Al Qalb al Salim, the pure heart, the dead heart, and the sick heart. And then we started discussing what exactly is it that causes the sicknesses of this heart. And we particularly mentioned four, or we were about to mention four, we mentioned two yesterday. So who would like to mention that? Also with a raise of hands. Because if somebody doesn't raise their hand, I'll pick a hand. What exactly is it that causes the heart to become rusty? Because we were discussing yesterday the different types of things or different actions that uh, can poison an individual's heart. You already answered. So if somebody else... Okay, you want to... Not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, that wasn't amongst the things. Those were the two different types of sicknesses of the heart. We were talking about four poisonous things to the heart. Is there anybody from the brothers? No? Yes, go ahead. What was that? Talking too much. Yeah, we discussed about talking too much. That was one. Number two? Yes. Exactly. So not lowering an individual's gaze. So that's uh, two. Now, today inshallah ta'ala, we'll be discussing the third and the fourth, and along with that, we'll also be discussing the things that replenish this heart. What exactly is it that an individual can use to help him fix this heart? Because we mentioned again and again, and we'll do that again today as well, that the Prophet sallallahu he said, in الْقُلُوبَ لَتَصْدَى Verily, the hearts become rusty. So the hearts, when they stay away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the obedience of Allah azza wa jal, then this can cause this heart to start to become rusty. And there are certain actions that work towards causing this heart to become rusty faster. And amongst those actions is eating excessively eating excessively. And the Prophet ﷺ, you know, he used to be extremely moderate in even this kind of an affair. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَا مَلَأَ آدَمِيٌّ وَعَاءٍ شَرٌ مِنْ بَطْنِهِ That a child of Adam has never filled a vessel worse than his stomach. 
as in a person should be eating moderately. And the reason for that and the relation of that with the heart is the fact that when a person has a very strong blood flow in his body, when a person has a very strong blood flow in his body, it becomes easier for shaitan to take this individual and occupy him in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How so? Let's look at the story of when the Prophet was walking out of the masjid and he was with his wife Safiya. We talked about that story from another angle yesterday. What did the Prophet say? He saw the two Sahaba, they started speeding up when they saw the Prophet So the Prophet looked at them and said, Hold on guys. And now Safiya, it's only Safiya. So the Prophet then continued and he said, فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَجْرِي بِبْنِ آدَمْ مَجْرَدَّمْ Verily, shaitan flows in the veins of, a, of the child of Adam, just as blood flows. Just as blood flows. So based on that, the ulama, they said, so long as the blood flow is extremely consistent, as in a person is energetic, it makes it easier for shaitan to use this individual in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when the Prophet sallallahu he told you know, the youth to get married, he said, يَا مَعْشَرَ الشَّبَابِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمْ الْبَاءَةَ فَلْيَتَزَوَّجْ Whoever is capable from amongst you, O youth, O young men, whoever is capable from amongst you to get married, then let him get, mar- get married. And whoever can't, then let him fast. فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصُّمْ فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاءٌ For verily, this will cut off his desires. Because he doesn't have a very strong blood flow. He doesn't have that consistency, that energetic, you know, nature. He doesn't have that. So for that reason, the Prophet ﷺ, he encouraged this individual to do what? To stay away from food. So, for that reason, it's better for an individual to eat also in moderation. Um, and then the third thing, or the fourth thing rather, is al mukhalata intermingling. It's intermingling. And that can be found, mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. Where he said, مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسَ الصَّالِحِ وَالسُّوءِ The example of a pious friend, a good friend, and the example of another that is not so good. كَحَامِلِ الْمِسْكِ وَنَافِقِ الْكِيرِ The example of these two is like the example of the one that has Musk. And another that blows and bellows. And another that blows and bellows. Then the Prophet وسلم, he continued and he said, فَحَامِلُ الْمِسْكِ إِمَّا أَنْ يُحْذِيَكِ As for the individual that has the musk, it's either that he will present to you this musk. وَإِمَّا أَن It's either that he'll present to you this musk or you buy from him. What of three things? Either you get it from him as a present, either he'll present it to you, gift it to you, either you'll purchase from him. This, that, or you will just have good scent to smell. How is that similar? to an individual that is a good friend, a pious friend. Either he will present to you, he will give you the opportunity to do good deeds. Either you'll ask him something and he'll explain to you what you're asking him. 
either this or that, or you'll never see any evil from him. He'll always be good to you, a good friend. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he continued and he started talking about Nafi Khulkid. He took, started speaking about the bad friend. He said, the example of that bad friend, however, is like the example of the one who blows and bellows. Either he will burn your clothes, or you will smell a bad scent from this individual. As he blows into the fire, The ashes will come and make little holes into your clothes. As he sins and leads you to sin, slowly but surely, a dot after another, a black dot after another, will be placed in your heart. One after the other, a black dot, will be dotted in your heart. If he's not able to dot your heart, at least you'll be smelling a bad scent from him. Every time you meet him, you're thinking about how you can protect yourself from this individual. How with this individual, if you leave him something, you don't trust him because he's not a trustworthy individual. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, He said, an individual will always be on the path of his friend. So you should be careful and beware of the person that you befriend. Be careful and beware of the person that you befriend. That's why the ulama, they divided meeting people into three different categories. The first of those categories being the type of people, the meeting of whom is like nourishment to the body. Just as you need on a daily basis to eat, to drink. Just as you need on your daily basis, you need your nutrition. You need to meet this category of people for you to keep yourself nourished. Who are these people? These, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, are the people of knowledge. These are the people of guidance. These are the people of truth. These, this is the good friend. The more you meet, the more you will be able to keep yourself nourished. The more you meet, the more you'll be able to keep yourself nourished. If you meet on a weekly basis, the dosage of your nourishment will be based on that. If you meet on a daily basis, that's how much it will be. If you meet on a monthly basis, then you can see where you stand. Because imagine eating once a month. Imagine eating once a month. If you eat on a yearly basis, you won't be around. Similarly, the heart, to keep it nourished, it's either you do it on a weekly basis or you do it on a monthly basis. But if you do it any more than that, you'll have a dead heart just as you have a dead body. So that's why the ulama, they consider this section or this group of people, meeting them on a regular, the ulama, they considered it like nourishment to the body. Like nourishment to the soul, just as you need your daily dosage of food, as we said. You need yourself some ilm, you need yourself someone that can help you purify, and you do, and you do need it. And we talked about that earlier on as well. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of His Prophet, He said, He recites upon them our verses. Also that he may purify them. So you need that purity. You need those people that can come and help you revive yourself. Have somebody 
to put yourself in check. Go to the Imam. Just as you have a nutritionist that you go to to help you set yourself a diet. Similarly, go to somebody to help you set yourself a diet of Iman. And I'm not saying give bay'ah to somebody now. I'm not saying that. But what I'm trying to say is that just as you need if you have a certain sickness, you need someone to solve it for you. Similarly, you need someone that can guide you through your problems. If you find your Iman low, he can put you in check and say, Hey brother, you did such and such, and that's probably what's causing it. Hey sister, you did such and such, and that's probably what's causing it. And people, some people are gifted in that sense. If a calamity befalls you, then they can link between that and something you may have done in your own life that you may have not considered before that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whatever strikes you in this life it is from that which you earned yourself. So have somebody, and you have an imma all over the city. Ask them for guidance. The Prophet, don't you see the example of the Sahaba? They used to go to the Prophet all the time. They'd be like, Ayyul Imani Khair, O Prophet of Allah. What action for belief is, belief is the best? What action is the best in Islam, O Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Verily, the legislations of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala have become numerous. So tell us one thing, O Prophet of Allah Sallallahu that we can do. Just one thing that we can stick to. Prophet of Allah, give me an advice. And the Prophet would then give a personalized set of advice for this particular individual. So as I said, have somebody that you can go to to seek those advice, seek that kind of advice. Someone that you look up to. Someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deems close to him. And the signs of that are found in the signs of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when you befriend, or when you intermingle, the first type, as we said, is meeting the people of knowledge. And the second type is meeting people, just regular people, just other people. And some of these people, intermingling with them is like seeking to be cured. You don't seek to be cured except that you're sick. How does that manifest in real life? If you have yourself a job, then you don't go around looking for a job. If you have a car, then you don't go around purchasing cars. If you have a problem, that's when you seek to solve it. So these kind of people, you only meet them. And that's most of mankind. You only meet them for the purpose of solving a problem. And that's why some of the ulama, they used to say that you don't meet people except for two reasons. It sounds kind of selfish, but it isn't. Because on that day, you, yourself, and my, me, myself, I'll be saying, myself and myself. Nafsi, nafsi. So sometimes you got to be a little bit selfish. So you only meet people for two reasons. For you to either benefit them, or seek benefit from them. 
Now the fact that you benefited them no, no longer is it selfish anymore. So these, this category of people, you only need them when you really need them. If you have everything you need, then seclude yourself for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or occupy your time in that which benefits the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why, you know, Ibn al-Jawzi did what he did, the example he gave yesterday. That's why he did what he did, that's why he was in such a dilemma, because he didn't want to meet people, because he thought they were all from this category right here, which is just a cure. If you need them, you meet them. If you don't have a car, you look for one. If you don't have a house, you go and purchase. If you don't have a job, you search around. But if you have all that, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you from amongst the people about who the Prophet said, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مِنْكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سَرَبِهِ مُعَافًا فِي جَزَدِهِ وَعِنْدَهُ قُوتُ يَوْمِهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا حِيزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا بِحَذَافِرِهَا That whoever from amongst you he wakes up in the morning and he is at rest and peace when it comes to his family in his house. And his body is cleansed of all sicknesses. It's pure. It's fine. He's healthy. Mu'afan fi jasadi. And he has a day worth of food. Then this individual, the example of him, is the one who's been given the dunya entirely. As in he doesn't need to go out and seek anymore now. Because he's got everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for him to fulfill the ultimate goal. And that is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if an individual has all this and still continues to do nothing but meet people and waste his time, there's something that he needs to do to put himself in check. Because Allah gave him his family. Allah gave him his wealth. Allah gave him what he needs to eat. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah didn't create us except for His worship. That's why we say that this category of people, which is the vast majority of mankind, the example of them is the example of a cure. You only seek it when you're sick. But if you seek it on a regular, then all the calamities that befall an individual that is constantly intermingling may occur for you as well. You go into a majlis, a gathering. And there it is, the hijab pin example. Her hijab pin doesn't look nice. His nose is too large. That brother, he got to get a beard trim. But that guy's bald. Where did hair go? Or just simply, I don't like that guy. The ulama they said, even saying, "Thabbatan Allahu iyak," or statements of such sort, is considered backbiting when an individual is mentioned. So let's say you're sitting in a gathering, and you feel. That Zayd is a bad person. He commits sins. And you're sitting with Amr. I am sitting with Amr, or Umar, to make it easier. 
And I see, and Zaid is mentioned, some random brother. And I say, Allah Yadina. Allah Yathabitna. Also that I can prove to this Umar right here that I'm better than him. Better than Zaid. May Allah guide us. May Allah put a stead path and fast on this path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just that mere statement, the ulama, they said, you're trying to look down on another person? It's enough for an individual to be evil, as the Prophet said, that he just looks down on somebody else. So somebody else is mentioning, all you say is, may Allah guide us, the ulama, they said, this is considered ghiba because you're trying to say that I'm better than fulan. And he's not that good. How often do things like this occur? Extremely often. Very often. And that's why we go back to the example of Ibn al-Jawzi there. He recognized that. He recognized that and when he did, he adapted a path of seclusion. He used to meet people, but we remember, remember the example we gave. He had a very creative methodology of meeting people so that he doesn't waste his time with wasteful conversations. Conversations that will come on the Day of Judgment, not on Mizan al Hasanat. They will come on the Day of Judgment. And a person will be in grief for what he'd done. And the third type of people, and these type of people, are deadly. And that is people meeting whom is like a sickness. Just as you realize that there is a plague somewhere. You stay away from that society. Ta'un. Just as you recognize that there is some sort of sickness that is prevalent in this particular society or in this particular city, you don't enter that city. You don't go in that sanctuary. You're afraid. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ told us that an individual will be on the path of his friend. You don't go into the wrong territory of friends. You don't go into the wrong territory of friends. يَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى And on that day, A transgressor will be biting his fingers. He'll say that, oh, I wish that I would have taken with Allah's Prophet والسلام, the path. And then he will say that Hasrata. Ya Hasrata. Oh, how I am in severe grief. Laqad adallani an al-dhikri ba'da iz ja'ali. And this Satan and people of that path, they misled me and misguided me from the remembrance of my Lord after it had come to me. All because he took up a friend that wasn't a good friend. We see brothers, we see sisters practicing, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then a few years later, we see the brother clean shaving, in 
a house party. Sister with her hijab off, just half naked. Why? All because they took up the wrong friends. A friend can really mislead an individual. That's why you have the example of that individual that went from the Muslim lands to Constantinople. And when he did such, he was a half of Kitabillah. He was a memorizer of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knew a little bit of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wouldn't say he was a faqih, but he knew some ilm as well. And when he got there, there was a woman, a Christian woman. And slowly but surely, she lured him into her path. And he was, he was amongst the strong hifal of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Years went by, it was a young man. And as time passed, he finally accepted Christianity as his faith. All because he befriended someone that he should have been befriending closely. And then a man came again from the Muslim lands to Constantinople all so that he can see this man and ask him he used to be a half of Kitabullah, he used to be someone that memorized the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I see that you're now a Christian do you remember something of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what do you think the man said I ask you what do you think the man said No, I don't remember anything of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Yes. What was that ayah, sister? All but one ayah. I forgot everything except one ayah. Rubama yawaddu alladheena kafaru law kanu muslimin. That maybe, perhaps, the people that disbelieved, they would hope that they were believers. Allah took the entire book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this vessel that had become filthy, the heart. Heart is where the Quran stays, as Ali radiallahu ta'ala and who put it in that same hadith. إِنَّمَا الْقُلُوبُ وِعَافَ أَشْغِلُوهَا بِالْقُرْآنِ وَلَا تُشْغِلُوهَا بِغَيْرِهَا The verily hearts are nothing but vessels. So occupy them with Quran. And don't occupy them with something else besides the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The entire book of Allah he forgot. It all started with a bad friend. And before that, he used to go to Halaqat Ilm. He used to be a pious young man who used to be someone that memorized the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It all started with that. So, there are a category of people that meeting them is like a sickness. If you don't have strong immunity to this sickness, then avoid meeting these people. That's why for those that are trying to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and develop immunity to disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you go back and call your friends. I know some people, they try to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they want to save everybody at the same time. You can't do that. You got bad friends, cut them off for a bit. I know it's difficult. They're your friends for years, cut them off. Because you can't handle it yet. 
It's a sickness and you don't have what it takes to fight the sickness. When you become strong, and you surely will if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that point, start calling those people as well. At that point, you should start calling those people. Otherwise, they'll drag you in the boat with them. Now, with that being said, Alhamdulillah, we've completed our session on the four major sicknesses or four major poisonous deeds, actions to the heart. And we will get into the different things that help an individual replenish the heart. But before that, inshallah ta'ala, we'll take a short break.